Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to 3D Now. My name is Jack and this is the AlphaWise U30 review. So hopping right into the video, I want to give a big thanks to GearBest.com for giving me this printer for a review. And so this AlphaWise U30 is the third generation of this AlphaWise U series printer. First there's a U10, then U20, and now the U30. So I was super excited to test out this printer because it has a ton of cool features for an amazing price. So a big difference from the U20 is that the U30 is a smaller size and more compact. The bed is still pretty big. It's 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters with a heated bed. It uses a Bowden feed system with an MK10-like extruder, which is the same as most Creality printers, and has a 0.4 mil nozzle, which is pretty standard by now. It's built with super sturdy extruded aluminum rails with bent sheet metal and has this really cool matte black and red finish which contrasts nicely and makes the printer look super cool. The control board on the printer and the power supply are placed under the printer base so they say it keeps it out of the hands of, of small children which I guess it does but it also makes the top of the printer look a lot cleaner and nicer. It has a 2.8 inch full color touchscreen that can change all the settings and menus on the printer. And it does have a ton of options on this menu, which is super cool. Of course, it has a micro SD card slot in the back with USB to control it as well. And a super big bonus is that the AlphaWise U30 has a 24 volt power system, which means that the nozzle and bed are gonna heat up a lot faster than other printers, which is pretty cool. In addition, it has a power failure option and a filament runout sensor. So two awesome features that are becoming standard now, but are a big help when making sure your print won't fail halfway through a print. Also, a really cool feature on this printer is the bed surface. It's a glass bed, and on the top is a plastic rough surface. So you can either print on the rough plastic build tack like surface, or flip it over and use a glass bed to have a super shiny surface. And they're both really cool options, so it's awesome that the AlphaWise put them both together into one build plate so you can use either one. It's a really cool option. Of course, it has a spool holder, a full metal spool holder that's placed on top of the printer, so it's nice and compact. And also something else that I haven't seen on any other low cost printers is that it actually has an acceleration curve on the axes. So if you try to move the Z axis, it actually has a little acceleration curve, which is pretty cool. I haven't seen that before on a printer like this. Also, the assembly was pretty quick and pretty easy. It had a really nice full color instruction manual that I assembled on a live stream. So if you want to see more printer unboxings, subscribe for more videos like that. It was really fun talking to all of you guys. So the live stream was about two hours, but that was because I put it together and we talked a lot and we, and we did the first print, which was the Benchy. So the Benchy turned out pretty well. It was a pre-installed model on the printer. It was weird the way they sliced it though, because the outer shell was three or four layers thick, which is a little weird, but it did come out pretty well. The outer shell did look a little bit rough, but I fixed that with adjusting some of the concentric nuts on the printer and that helped out a lot. For the next print, which was a calibration test or like another benchmark test, it had a bunch of overhangs and circles and stuff like that and small details and the printer printed it pretty well. Of course it's not perfect, but I was really surprised when the U30 could do a really big overhang with no problems at all. And that's due to the really big part cooling fan. As you can see on the on the right side of the extruder, there's a really thick oversized part cooling fan with a big duct that points the air towards the print. And this allows for much, much better overhangs than other printers, which is super cool. The big overhang tests on this calibration print turned out super, super clean and really, really good. And that's again, in part because of the big part cooling fan, which is super cool. The next thing I printed was a Christmas tree because it's Christmas time and it turned out pretty well. This is in Melt Ink Light Green PLA, and I printed it with one shell, one top and one bottom layer, so it's hollow inside for a nice, fast, quick print, and it turned out pretty decent. There were a few layer separations, but I think that's because my temperature was not hot enough, which I fixed next time. But again, this Christmas tree turned out pretty well. It was a nice, fast, quick print. So the next print was a dog, and I used a different material than the PLA I used before, and that is Hatchbox Wood PLA. And so this wood had to print at a higher temperature, 210 degrees Celsius. So this wood printed 
pretty well. There was a little bit of stringing, which you get from printing wood, and the dog turned out really, really well. The outer shells fused together really well, and the surface looked really clean, especially with this rough matte-like wood surface finish. The next thing I did was flip over the bow plate to the glass side, and I printed a carabiner. Now, usually with glass beds, you have to put down a layer of glue to get the print to stick, but I just wanted to go out on a limb and use nothing at all and print directly on the glass bed surface. And to my surprise, this carabiner I printed stuck right to the bed and turned out absolutely amazing. Now in this print, I used Hashbox Red PLA and the bottom surface, because it was directly on glass, looks super shiny and looks super, super cool, which was awesome. Again, the outer surface shells looked amazing. They looked super clean. The top and bottom layers looked perfect. And I put the carabiner together and worked perfectly and it was super strong, especially for PLA. And again, that bottom glossy surface on glass beds looks super, super cool. The next thing I printed was a little engineering model. It was a gear and a plate with some holes and squares in it. And again, this was on the glass bed, and this time I used Experland Real White PLA, and it turned out absolutely amazing. The bottom glass bed with no adhesion on it looks absolutely amazing with that mirror-like glass finish on the bottom. Looks super cool. And the outer shells looked amazing. The top surface looked really good. I used three top and bottom layers on these prints, and that made the top layer look really clean, all the layer lines are right next to each other with no bumps or grooves. And again, this printer prints really, really well for the price. So with all these prints out of the way, here are my thoughts. So I really love the bed, as you can tell. And you can change surfaces from glass to this plastic surface. If you're printing higher temp materials like hips or ABS, you want to have that nice sticky plastic surface. But if, you, if you're printing PLA, you want a super nice shiny glass bed surface you can flip it over and use the glass bed which is a cool feature that i love that i haven't seen on many of these 3d printers also the touchscreen is super cool it has a ton of features and options so you can move the bed around of course but there's some extrusion settings to extrude filament you can probe different points on the bed to calibrate the height of the nozzle with five points on the bed and there's some other really cool features that you don't usually get in other 3D printer menus. Again, the 24 volt power is an amazing feature to have because it makes everything heat up a lot faster. So it stinks to wait around for a few minutes when your printer is heating up, but because of the 24 volt system, everything heats up super fast and stays at that temperature. Also, I really like having everything compact and in one small package. So I'll be totally comfortable picking this printer up, putting it in a car, and moving it around because everything is bolted down to this extruded aluminum frame with bent sheet metal. There's only one 3D printed part on this printer, which is a fan duct, which makes everything super strong, sturdy, and I like how everything is nice and compact with the power supply underneath the printer and looks super cool in that matte black and red finish. Also, the part cooling fan is huge and allows for awesome cooling which is good for PLA and bridging, which allows you to print more models that have bigger overhangs without use of support. So I would definitely recommend this printer to somebody who has some 3D printing experience, but wants to have some more really cool features. And I definitely think this is an amazing printer for the price. Right now it's 175 US dollars, which is an amazing price for a printer like this. So if you want to check out this printer or buy it, I'll put the link down in the description below, of course. So thanks again for GearBest for sending this printer out to me for a review. So thanks again for watching, guys. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for more 3D printing videos like this. Comment down below if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. I will answer every single one of them. And I will see you guys in the next video.